This is G484 Homework Booklet, Question 20. A very typical beginning where you have a example of simple harmonic motion, simply a mass on a spring, and you are asked to define simple harmonic motion. The two standard points are here. Acceleration is proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. And secondly, a comment on the direction of the acceleration. It is towards the equilibrium position. You could alternatively say the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the displacement. These two points relate to the equation for simple harmonic motion acceleration, where we say acceleration equals minus 2 pi f all squared times x. It's interesting to note that this definition has come up three times in our homework booklet, so it's one that is popular, make sure you know it. Some more checking of your understanding of the terms with a true or false question. So for this mass spring system, we ask ourselves, is the period of oscillation constant? The answer is yes, it is. The amplitude may well de decrease over time. But you need to remember that things that oscillate with simple harmonic motion that we have an isochronous oscillation, and that term means that the time period stays constant. If you think about um, an old-fashioned grandfather clock with a pendulum, it wouldn't be very good if the time period of the oscillation changed as the amplitude decreased. Next one. The net force on the mass is equal to the weight. No, it can't be, because we also have the other force of tension in the spring that acts upon the mass. So the net force is due to both those forces together. Thirdly, the acceleration of the mass is a maximum at the midpoint. Well, in our definition, we said the acceleration is proportional to displacement. The displacement at the midpoint is zero, so that means the acceleration must be a minimum, leading the statement to be false. And finally, the velocity of the mass is proportional to the displacement. This is a misleading statement. It's just mixing the word velocity in there. It should be acceleration is proportional to displacement, as you have hopefully already stated in your definition. The next part of the question relates to an experiment. So we are told that a student wishes to investigate whether the period of oscillation of a simple pendulum is constant for all angles of swing. We're asked to describe how the student would carry out this investigation and given a number of bullet points of things to include in our answer. Before rushing into your answer, have another look at exactly what's involved in this experiment and what the variables are. So the student wants to investigate whether the time period of the oscillation is affected by the angle of the swing. The student may well be wondering what happens to that grandfather clock as the amplitude of the swings decreases over time, therefore decreasing the angle. So use the bullet points, they're there to help you, and start with a sketch of the apparatus. They want you to identify the angle of swing, so just mark in an angle theta. Think about the apparatus you would use, you're going to need a protractor to measure the angle and then you're going to need something to do the timing. Now the mark scheme did allow all three of these options as valid methods for timing the time period. The next bullet point is how the measurements would actually be made. So you need to measure the angle of release with a protractor 
and then you need to state what you are using to measure your time period. Now, the most obvious mark here that is easily missed is this one. How these results would be used to form a conclusion. Now, often in an experiment of this type, you would be expected to comment on the need to draw a graph. And that is a possible answer here. You could plot a graph of period against angle. We're not really expecting the time period to change with angle. And it would be possible to identify that from a table of results. So in this particular question, the mark was awarded for just comparing the time periods for different angles of release. The next bullet point, the final one, is a major difficulty that you would be likely to encounter and how you might overcome it. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if many of you think about the problem when you're timing a pendulum that one time period is a very short period of time and so it can be difficult to measure that accurately. To some extent, access to data loggers and millisecond timers can ov override that problem. But it's also not what this question is really looking for. It's not specific enough to the context of what you've been asked to investigate. If you think back to this situation of the pendulum swinging, and if we leave it swinging for a number of oscillations, that amplitude and the angle are going to decrease. And that makes timing over a number of periods uh, an inappropriate way, because it's actually going to hide the results that you're looking for. So for that reason, this is the only answer that you can get credit for here. There is also, sadly, a method mark awarded for the difficulty. But I think probably that does make sense nevertheless. So the difficulty is that the angle of swing decreases during the timing. And the solution is to have a timing method that allows you to measure either a quarter or a half or at most one swing and the time corresponding to that. And so you need to be using an electronic timer or a data logger. So if you referred to a stopwatch earlier, you can still get the mark for knowing what you need to time, but you absolutely do need an electronic timer or a data logger here. Um, there are two other options, though, slightly different approaches. If you had a data logger with a motion sensor, you could just let the pendulum keep swinging and you could then study the data to see if the time period is changing uh, as the experiment progresses. A similar idea could be to video the motion. It's important, however, to say that the video must record time values, otherwise you won't be able to analyse what's going on.